Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as acids, bases, pH, and buffer. In our daily routine life, we are using a lot of different substances that have different pH there. Some substances are acidic in nature, some are neutral, and some have alkaline nature there. This difference is also visible in the food that we eat and in the cleaning substances that we use in our daily routine life. Now, what is the basic difference between acids and bases? We have three different theories that's going to explain or define acids and bases. And these theories are Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases, the bronsted lorry theory of acids and bases, and Lewis' theory of acids and bases. Now let's start with the first theory, and that is the Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases. According to Arrhenius, acids are those compounds that increases the concentration of H positive ion in the water. And bases are those compounds that increases the concentration of OH ion in the water. When acids react with bases, they produce salt from it. Let's take a common example here. Now in this example, NaOH is reacting with hydrochloric acid and producing the common salt that is sodium chloride plus water. Now according to Arrhenius, HCl is an acid because it releases H positive ion in the aqueous solution. And NaOH is a base because it is going to release OH ions in the aqueous solution. Now positive ions always make contact with the negative ion. So in this reaction, sodium plus ion will make contact with chloride negative ion and will make common salt that is sodium chloride here. And H positive ion will make contact with the OH negative ion and will make water here. Bingo! Now this reaction is so perfect. It explains acids and bases clearly here. Then why do we need to have two different other theories here? The answer is the Arrhenius theories have limitations for the compounds like ammonia. Now ammonia is a weak base. Why? Because it can make a reaction with acid here and produces salt from it. Now we can make an excuse that ammonia in the water can make ammonium ion and release OH negative ion here. So by this way, it is releasing OH negative ion, so it can consider a base according to Arrhenius theory. But if we take ammonia in a gas form and do the reaction with acid here, it will still make that salt. So it cannot be explained by the Arrhenius theory. That's why we have the second theory, and that theory is called as bronsted lorry theory of acids and bases. According to Bronsted and Lowry theory, acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. The compound that can act both as acids and bases is called as amphoteric compound, just like water. Okay, now we will take that reaction back again, the reaction of hydrochloric acid with ammonium. Now in this case, hydrochloric acid has the ability to donate proton. So it is a proton donor and it is an acid. Ammonia is accepting that proton, so it is a base here. If we think this reaction is a two-way reaction, then ammonium ion has the ability to release proton, so it can act as a conjugate acid here. And chloride ion has the ability to accept that proton so it can act as a conjugate base here. Now by this reaction we can understand two different things. That is strong acid and weak acid or strong base or a weak base. Now strong acid or base is a one-way reaction. For example, if we have 10 moles of hydrochloric acid it will get completely dissociated into the 10 moles of H positive ion and 10 moles of chloride negative ion. 
But if we have a weak acid or a weak base, then the reaction will not be one way, it will rather be two way reaction. For example, if we take 10 moles of acetic acid here, that is a weak acid, then the reaction will be having 3 moles of H positive ion, 3 moles of acetate ion, and 7 moles will remain unchanged there. Okay, now we need to know the acid ionization constant if the reaction is a two-way reaction. So the acid ionization constant will be represented by Ka and it will have the products on the upper hand divided by the reactants. Ka is directly proportional to H positive ion. It means higher the value of Ka, higher the concentration of H positive ion in the aqua solution and stronger the acid will be. Now we know that pH is basically the negative log of H positive ion. So the P of Ka will be pKa is equal to negative log of Ka. So higher the value of Ka, stronger the acid is, it means we have lower the pH. We can assume the same type of reaction for base as well. So for the base ionization constant, it will be represented by Kb with the products on the top divided by the reactants at the bottom. And the pKb is equal to the negative log of Kb. If we add pKa with pKb, it will be equal to pKw. pKw is the ionization constant of water. And it is also called as equilibrium constant. And it is equal to 1 into 10 raised to power minus 14 at 25 degrees centigrade. Now this is the same type of thing that was represented on the top. That is Ka into Kb is equal to Kw and that is the equilibrium constant or the water dissociation constant. Now the question is, as we know, water is a neutral compound and the neutral compound have pH that is equal to 7. But right now we are saying that pKw is 14. Just look at closely here. We are adding two pH together. PKA plus PKB is equal to PKW. So if we think that this is 7 plus 7 is equal to 14 here. That's why PKW is 14 but the pH of water is 7. Now with all this information, this is the right point to explain buffers here. Buffer is a type of solution that resists a change in pH if we add acid or a base in it. Let's take an example of a weak acid. So at this time I'm taking 15 moles of acetic acid, which is gonna dissociate into the five moles of H positive ion, five moles of acetate ion, and five moles of acetic acid will remain unchanged. Because it is a weak acid, the reaction will be a two-way reaction. In this picture, H positive ion will be represented by the blue color and acetate ion will be represented by the purple color. Now in this solution, I'm going to add 5 moles of NaOH. NaOH is a strong base, so it will dissociate into the 5 moles of Na plus ion and 5 moles of OH negative ion. When we put the strong base inside the solution, all the Na positive ion will make contact with the 5 moles of acetate ion present inside the solution. And all the OH negative ion will make bond with the H positive ion present inside the solution. Now all the ions are taken up by the ions present inside the solution already, so there shouldn't be any drastic change of pH. So the solution in this case is 1 ratio 1 and this is a buffer. Let's try to add a strong acid in the solution and see how it's going to resist the pH change there. So again, I'm taking 15 moles of acetic acid, which is going to get dissociated into the 5 moles of H positive ion and 5 moles of acetate ion. But this time, I'm adding 5 moles of HCl. HCl is a strong acid. So it will be completely dissociate into the 5 moles of H positive ion and 5 moles of chloride ion. When we put the strong acid inside the solution, 
all the H positive ion of HCl will make bond with the acetate ion present in the solution already. And all the chloride ion will remain there like this. The pH change is only concerned with the H positive ion. So there shouldn't be any increased number of H positive ion in the solution and there is no drastic change of pH again. The solution is again 1 ratio 1. So this is a buffer. This little change in pH can be determined by this equation. Now this theory is so perfect. It explains buffer. It explains pH. It also explains the difference between a strong acid or a weak acid and a strong base or a weak base. Then why do we need the third theory? Because this theory also has some type of limitations. And these limitations come in handy over here. Now as we know, ammonia is a proton acceptor, so it is a base. But what about boron trifluoride? Because boron trifluoride can react with ammonia and make salt from it. So it should be present under the category of acid or a base. And it cannot be explained by the definition provided by bronsted lowry theory. That's why we need the third theory and that is called as the Lewis theory of acids and bases. According to Lewis, an acid is an electron pair acceptor and base is an electron pair donor. Let's take the reaction again. In this reaction, you can see that ammonia has a lone pair here. Now, why does ammonia have a lone pair? Look at this picture closely. This N is the nitrogen and it is present here in blue circle. In the periodic table, nitrogen is present in group 5. And group number means number of electrons present in the outermost shell. So if nitrogen belongs to group 5, it will have 5 electrons in the outermost shell. And three electrons are making bonds with the hydrogen atom here that is represented by this yellow circles here. So out of five, three are already sharing bonds with the hydrogen. Two electrons are remain there as a lone pair. That's why ammonia has a lone pair here. Now ammonia will donate this lone pair to boron trifluoride so it is an electron pair donor and electron pair donors come under the category of bases. That's how ammonia is a Lewis base. And boron trifluoride is accepting that lone pair so this is acting as an acid because it is an electron pair acceptor in this case and making the salt here. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.